Have you ever wondered if you could run faster without feeling exhausted? What if there were scientifically proven techniques that could help you run fast with little to no effort? I've been running for over 10 years, competing against some of the best in the world and helping runners of all levels reach their potential. Yet we always ran into the same problem. Running feels extremely hard. For years, I focused on training strategies and running form, but it wasn't until I started looking into neuroscience and physiology that I discovered three extremely powerful techniques you can start using right now to make running feel so much easier. When I began applying these methods, my consistency went through the roof because running never felt truly hard. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to use these powerful strategies to start running fast with less effort, whether you're a complete beginner or an elite runner. I haven't seen these strategies discussed anywhere else online, and it's crazy that almost nobody is using them. But if you're headed out for a hard run today and need a quick motivation boost, let me show you a powerful science-backed protocol that I've used that you can use right now to start running faster with less effort. Here's what you do. 30 to 60 minutes before your run, eat foods that are high in something called tyrosine. Don't be intimidated by the name. It's just something that helps you get a higher drive. You know that feeling when you want to conquer the world and nothing can stop you? Eating foods like bananas and avocados and almonds can help give you that feeling. In fact, a study published in the Journal of Psychiatry and Neuroscience showed that foods high in tyrosine can improve mental and physical performance. But that's not all you can do. Research has consistently shown that if you consume caffeine, you will not only improve your athletic performance, you will also increase motivation. Just be cautious of stomach issues if you decide to drink four cups of coffee before your next run. Yeah. I can't tell you how I know that. You can also listen to music, but as I'm about to show you, you need to be extremely careful about when and how you use music if you want to run fast with no effort. I used to listen to music every time I went out for a run. Then I started to notice something strange. When my headphones were out of battery and I had to go for a run without it, the run felt so much harder. I felt extremely demotivated. I almost couldn't get out the door sometimes. And then one day my trainer told me that because I could not listen to music while racing, I had to have at least one day per week without it. Because I always tend to take things to the extreme, I decided to run completely without music. And at first everything felt so much harder and I felt like I couldn't push as hard as I was used to. But then something strange happened. Not only did I start enjoying running without music, but all of a sudden, when I put my headphones on, I could not stand it. I felt claustrophobic, and all of a sudden, I hated running with music. And then for my long runs on Sundays, I would start to have the headphones on again, just to try to get out of my head when I had to run for a long time. And boom, I was hooked again. I was back to hating running without music, and then the cycle would repeat. It wasn't until years later when I heard a podcast talking about motivation and drive and how it all connects that I started to realize why this happened. So let me show you why this happens and more importantly, how we can use this to our advantage. In our brain, we have a molecule that is responsible for our drive and motivation. That is called dopamine. Now, dopamine is often released when we experience or anticipate something enjoyable, like eating our favorite food or listening listening to the music we love. But when you frequently stimulate your dopamine system, say by constantly listening to music, you will start to get a little bit too used to the high level of dopamine. Then over time, your brain becomes less sensitive to dopamine. This is why you can absolutely love a song, listen to it every single day, and then one day you just feel like it's boring and never want to hear it again. This is known as desensitization. That means that when I was blasting my tunes through my headphones, I got desensitized and I just didn't get the boost that I used to get. And worse, without the music, I felt even less motivated because my baseline for dopamine had shifted. So that begs the question, how do we take advantage of music so we can get more motivated and start running faster with less effort? After I learned about the science, I came up with a protocol to help me take advantage of music 
so it could help me whenever I felt less motivated. So let me show you my four step protocol to avoid desensitization and take advantage of music while still being able to enjoy some awesome beats. One, avoid listening to the same songs every workout. Changing up your playlist can keep the music fresh and exciting. This maximizes dopamine release each time. Spotify has a great feature for this that combines your music with recommendations. I use that a lot. Two, instead of having music on throughout the entire workout, save it for when you really need a boost, such as during the last few minutes of a run or during a particular hard part of your workout. I usually listen to podcasts in the easy part of my run and then switch it up to music for the hard parts. Three, as mentioned, you have to integrate workouts without music. This not only helps prevent dopamine desensitization, but will also allow you to focus more on your form, breathing, and the other joys of running. Look at the trees, take in the city. Running is about so much more than just being in your head. Take it all in. Four, sometimes try listening to your favorite tunes after completing your exercise as a form of reward. I usually have a couple of times per month where I wait to hear music until I do my cool down. This might actually raise your dopamine levels during your run because your brain anticipates the music. Back when I was a professional triathlete, I was always known for taking the same route every single day for every single workout. You see, I thought it was convenient and it allowed me to only focus on my effort and my heart rate. But when I stopped my professional career, I decided to try and switch things up so I would run on different surfaces and on different routes every single time. I started running on new trails, in tall grass, and even in sand sometimes. At first, it was quite challenging. My body had to adapt to new surfaces and I ached everywhere. I soon realized that it was so much easier to run for longer. I felt way more engaged and just way more motivated. And I felt like I could run harder with less effort. Suddenly running for an hour felt like nothing. It was like magic. And when I looked into the research, I suddenly realized why varying up my surfaces and my routes had such a positive impact. You see, not only does switching up your runs on different surfaces help you with injury prevention. It also stimulates something called your body's proprioception. It's basically your body's sense of precision and movement. This helps make your runs more dynamic and less mentally draining. But it also keeps your mind occupied, making you forget that you're even running. Just like when people play soccer and they run after the ball and they forget that they're running because they're so focused on the task at hand. So here's how to take advantage of this on your next run to make running for hours feel like nothing. One, plan your week to include runs on different different surfaces. For instance, do your long run on trails, interval training on grass, and recovery runs on the road. Two, if you're new to running on softer or uneven terrains, start slowly. Three, running on trails or sand can be tricky, so pay close attention to your form. Keep a shorter stride and stay light on your feet to run safely. Four, one of the biggest perks of running on different surfaces is the change in scenery. Take the time to appreciate your surroundings, whether it's the beautiful forest trail or the open expanse of the beach. This mental shift can make your runs feel less like a chore and more like an adventure. If you do what I'm about to tell you, you'll wonder how you ever lived in such a zombie state and you'll have so much more energy and everything will feel so much easier. For years, I thought I could get away with late night runs and early morning swims. Just like everyone else, I've heard the importance of sleep, but I thought I was the exception. But let me tell you right now, you are not the exception. You need a sleep routine, and I promise you, you will feel like a new human being. So let me show you my minimalistic, super effective sleep routine. One, go to bed and wake up at the same time daily. Two, Get at least 10 minutes outside within the first hour of waking up. Three, no screens one hour before bedtime and one hour after waking up. Four, no caffeine after 2 p.m. Now there's one more strategy to help you run faster with less effort, and that is to train the correct way to make sure that you get better for every single run you do. And I'll show you exactly how to maximize your potential to become the best runner you can possibly be in this video right now.